diffusion. Then the process takes off. Um, it lights up a large area and it, it starts to shine on its own within a matter of minutes. It's a very quick process. In that first burst of light, the star has begun its lifelong activity as a factory for making other chemical elements. Every atom in everything around us was made in the heart of a star. And all were made from the same starting ingredient. The simplest element that we have is hydrogen. And it's actually the building block for all the other elements that we have. In the heart of the sun, hydrogen nuclei, protons, are stuck together to make helium. It sounds straightforward, but it can only happen in the most extreme conditions. In order for these protons to come together, because they're both positively charged, they don't want to come together. They've actually got to be pushed together. In order to do this, you need very high temperatures, so they're moving very fast, and you also need very, very high pressures. The only part of the sun that is hot and dense enough is the core, an area that contains over half the star's mass in less than 2% of its volume. Here at 15 million degrees, the protons are bashed together so hard that they fuse. A helium nucleus is a tiny bit lighter than the combined mass of the four protons it is made from. And as Einstein tells us, it is that tiny bit of lost mass that provides the power. Energy is equal to mass times the speed of light times the speed of light. Now the speed of light is a very, very big number. So if we just take a small amount of mass, we get a huge amount of energy. And that's the energy which actually powers our sun. Every second, five million tons of the sun is converted to pure energy. And although it has been burning for five billion years, it is only halfway through its supplies of hydrogen. The light produced in the core must travel over half a million kilometers to the surface. And it does so very slowly. The heart of the sun is so dense that the speed of light is less than one millimeter a second. It can take 200,000 years for the light to travel from the core to the surface. It takes just another eight minutes to get to the Earth. This is what the power of nuclear fusion looks like from 150 million kilometers away. This is what it looks like close up. The H-bomb was man's first attempt at recreating the sun on Earth. A balloon full of hydrogen squeezed until it released its energy. In contrast to its destructive power, it's long been realized that controlled nuclear fusion could solve the world's energy problems. It has been one of the holy grails of science for half a century. This kind of power, the H-bomb, is a man-made version of this, the sun. In 1958, Britain announced that she could produce this power in the laboratory in a machine called Zeta. There is a real prospect of unlimited energy from controlled thermonuclear fusion. Unfortunately, it wasn't that easy. But now, nearly 50 years later, in the same laboratories in Oxfordshire, scientists are finally managing to create their own star on Earth. Okay, ready. We're going shot one, four, six, five, eight. Starting shot in five seconds.
It might not seem like much, but slow down by 300 times, the pictures reveal how the gas plasma is being squeezed and heated to create the most extreme conditions in the solar system. Plasmas, I always like to think of as being like na naughty children. They're full of energy and they are want to misbehave. And it's our job to try and control that misbehavior. For the particles to fuse on Earth, the temperatures need to be raised to 10 times those found at the heart of the sun. Bombarding the gas with a stream of fast neutrons raises the temperature to over 100 million degrees. Only then can the energy of nuclear fusion be released. After years of learning to control the plasma, scientists now believe they are within sight of harnessing the sun's power. The aim of it is to be able to produce cheap, clean and effectively an inexhaustible supply of electricity for future generations. This is only a small experimental reactor. It can only run for a few seconds and sucks up more energy than it creates. But the next generation of bigger reactors is already being built. When operational, they will produce 10 times more energy than they use. They will be stars on Earth, power stations that won't deplete natural resources or produce dangerous waste products. It sounds great, but recreating the sun isn't easy, and it may be another 50 years before the fusion power station becomes reality. Until then, we'll just have to make do with the real thing. But that's not so bad. Just seeing sunlight is enough to cheer us up. Well, many people think it's the warmth of the sun that is associated with us feeling good. And of course, that's true. But in fact, research has shown that it's not really the warmth, it's actually the light that's important. Sunlight controls our daily cycle making sure we wake up in the morning and go to sleep at night. When there's not enough light, those patterns get disturbed with miserable effect. It's a clinical fact that depression is more common in winter because of the lack of sunlight. They call it SAD, Seasonal Affective Disorder. Seasonal affective disorder is a depressive illness that starts during the autumn and early winter and usually goes away completely during the spring and early summer. Some people feel quite miserable and depressed and gloomy uh, during the winter months and some people, a small proportion, will go on to develop clinically significant depression which requires treatment. This is Rattenberg, a fairy tale Austrian village cursed by lack of sunlight. Due to a quirk of geology, it gets no sunlight at all between November and February. During those winter months, the sun never rises high enough to clear the brow of Rat Mountain. And the town lies in permanent shadow, while its neighbor across the river basks in the sunshine. In winter, of course, it's very cold. It's shadow. And as you can imagine, it's, it's cold. We are freezing. And if you want to have some sun, you have to move to the next village. It makes you happier to sit in the sunlight and not to freeze in the shadow. Frozen and in the dark, the residents have been forced to take desperate measures to bring some light into their lives.